Okay, you guys, so in this video, we're going to continue on with some problems from the TSI 2 math study guide. So we're going to start with question number 11. If you guys feel like I'm breaking down the problem too much, please just be patient because I have students on all different types of levels who watch my videos and they may have extra questions. So question number 11 says, a history class is made up of 12 10th graders and 9 11th graders. I already see that I'm gonna have to start taking notes. I'm dealing with 10th graders and I'm dealing with 11th graders. I see that I'm gonna have 12 total students in the 10th grade and nine total students in the 11th grade. And then it says the 10th graders average 77 on the midterm exam. So I'm gonna write that 77 is their average. And it says, and the 11th graders average 91 on the midterm exam. So 91 was the 11th graders average. So the question is, what was the average grade on the midterm exam for the entire class? So I already know the mistake that many students are gonna make. So let me just show you the mistake. A lot of students are going to say, oh, average. So I'm just going to take 77 plus 91, 77 plus 91. I'm going to divide that by two and I'm going to get 84 and 84 is going to be my answer. That is a mistake. And I'm going to show you why that's a mistake. They're not asking you what is the average between the two different grades. If they were asking what's the average between the two grades, then 84 would be the answer but they're actually asking you, what is the average grade for the entire class? Meaning out of the total number of students, which would be 12 plus nine, which is 21 students, out of 21 total students, what is the average grade that they got? So because they don't tell us what every single student, what grade every single student got, we're just going to say that every student in the 10th grade got an average of 77. So we're gonna do 77 plus 77 plus 77 plus 77 12 times. That is a lot to do. So instead of doing that, we're gonna do 77 times 12. And then we're gonna add it to the grades that the nine students got in 11th grade. So instead of saying 91 plus 91 plus 91 nine times, we're gonna do 91 times nine students. So that's going to give us a total of all the grades that all the students got. When we're trying to find average, we add up all the grades together divided by the number of students. And we found that the total number of students is 21. Now, whatever answer this gives me is going to be my average that they're looking for. So let's just go ahead and quickly solve. 77 times 12 is 924. 91 times 9 is 819 divided by 21. 924 plus 819 is 1743 divided by 21. When you divide those two, you get an average of 83. So the correct answer choice would be B, 83. All right. So if you have any questions, please make um, let me know in the comments below but we are gonna continue on to our next problem. So question number 12 says, which of the following is not, not equivalent to three X minus 12 times X plus four? The way that I would solve this is that I would just distribute three X minus 12 times X plus four. If it's easy for you to distribute, go ahead and distribute these two together and then figure out which of the four is not equivalent. If it's not very easy for you to distribute, I wanna just break it down a little bit further for you so that you can feel confident the next time you see a problem like this. So we're just gonna take everything in this first parentheses and multiply it by everything in the second parentheses, but we're gonna take it one term at a time. So we're gonna multiply three X times X and then three X times four. So. 3x times x, whenever you're multiplying exponents, then you're going to go ahead and just add them together. So 3 times that invisible 1 is just 3. x to the first power times x to the first power would be x to the 2 power, 
or x to the second power. So it'll be 3x squared. And then we're going to go ahead and do 3x times 4. So 3x times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. There's nothing to multiply the x by, so 12x. So plus 12x. And so we're done with this 3x. Let's move on to the negative 12. So now we're going to multiply negative 12 by everything in that second parentheses. Negative 12 times x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times positive 4 is negative 48. Now we're going to go ahead and see if we can combine any like terms. There isn't any other term that has an x squared in it, so we're just going to bring down the 3x squared. Then we see that this and this, both of those terms, have an x in it, so we can combine it. So 12x minus 12x just becomes 0. 12 minus 12 is 0. So these two just kind of get canceled out. And then negative 48, there is no other constant or number by itself. So we just bring it down. So we now know that this is also equivalent to 3x squared minus 48. So now let's go ahead and see if 3x squared minus 48 is equivalent to a, b, c, or d. Which one is it not equivalent to? So we already see that c is equivalent to 3x squared minus 48 because it's the exact same. So we know c is not going to be the answer. All right, so what about a? Let's go ahead and break down a. 3 times x squared minus 8x plus 16. We're going to go ahead and distribute the 3. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 8x is negative 24x. And then 3 times 16 is going to be positive 48. This is not the same as this. So A is not equivalent. So we may have gotten our answer, but let's go ahead and do the rest. Let's see if B is equivalent. So we're going to do 3 times x squared minus 16. We're going to go ahead and distribute that 3. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 16 is negative 48. That's the same as this. So B is equivalent. And let's go ahead and test out D as well. And it's important to know how to test these out because you may not get the answer. It may not always be at the very top of the choices. You may have to test each one of these out. So I want you to feel prepared and know how to do so. So 3x plus 4 and then minus 12x plus 4. So we're just going to go ahead and distribute this. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 4 is plus 12x. And then negative 12 times x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times 4 is negative 48. These two are like terms, so you combine them. They cancel each other out, and you're left with 3x squared minus 48. And yes, that's the exact same here. So d is also equivalent. So the only one that is not equivalent would be choice A. All right, let's continue on. Question number 13 says, if the cost of carpeting a floor is $2.50 per square foot, how much will it cost to carpet a rect rectangular floor that is 10 feet by 12 feet? Anytime they're talking about shapes, I like to draw them. So it's 10 feet by 12 feet. If you're laying a carpet on the floor, it's going to cover the entire carpet. So now I know that I'm dealing with area. Area equals length times width. So area would equal 10 times 12. So area would be 120 feet squared. So now that we know the total amount of feet that needs to be covered, we're going to multiply it by the price per foot. So we're going to do 120 times 2.50 and we're going to get 300. So our answer is going to be three. It'll cost $300 to cover that carpet. And so let's go ahead and move on to our final problem. So problem number 15, it takes some time to understand this type of problem. I'm thinking that I may put this into the next video so that I have enough time to break it down. So actually let's end the video here and then I'll be able to continue on with problem number 15 in my next video. I hope that these problems have helped you out. Um, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and please comment below if you have any questions. I hope you guys all have a re great rest of your day and I hope you guys do well in your test.